folks, and welcome to the Santa Clarita Valley Leadership and Business Solutions Podcast. I'm Paul Raggio. And I am Lisa Raggio, and we are with One True North Leadership and Business Solutions in Santa Clarita. And we are here today, tomorrow, and in the future to help you find your way. We are so happy and proud to be partnering with The Signal to be delivering this weekly webcast to you, where we guarantee authentic conversations with community leaders and find out more about what they're doing and why they're doing it and how we can learn from it. And I'm so excited that we're able to talk to Sonia K. Blake today, who is the president and CEO of the Valley Economic Alliance. We have a lot to learn from her. And uh, we're going to introduce her in a few minutes. I'll read her bio, bio and we'll have a conversation. But before then, Paul, tell us a little bit about some information our listeners should, should hear from us. Yeah, we've got a great offering that we really encourage you to take advantage of. And it's called a business health checkup. And it's uh, an opportunity for you to be able to sit with Lisa and me. And we go through a long questionnaire about the health of your business. And we talk about what your potential pain points are. We get into business development, talk about your marketing, sales, your customer service. How do you do your planning, whether it's a 90-day plan, annual plan, strategic plan. And then we also talk about your budget and your financial forecast and what may come out of that. All of this is intended to expose some areas that you uh, may be challenged in or need help to help your business scale. So we encourage you to get in touch with us to take a hold of it. It's about 60 to 90 minutes long and it's of great value to you. Lisa, let's introduce our guest. Excellent, okay. Well, we are really excited to be having Sonia K. Blake join us today. And we've gotten to know Sonia over the last few months and really uh, respect the work that she's been doing with the Valley Economic Alliance which has a long and strong history in serving the San Fernando Valley. So I'm gonna read you her bio and then we're gonna get into our uh, discussion. So Sonia K. Blake is the president and CEO of the Valley Economic Alliance based in Sherman Oaks, California. In this capacity, she is a leading catalyst facilitating economic development in the San Fernando Valley, a vital and burgeoning region of the city of Los Angeles comprising five cities, 1.9 million residents and 64,000 businesses. Prior to her leadership of the Alliance, Sonia served as Director of Community Business in Los Angeles with Mayor Garcet under uh, Mayor Eric Garcetti's Office of Economic Development, CEO of the National Association of Women Business Owners in Los Angeles, and Small Business Advocate in the Office of former Governor Gray Davis. Sonia graduated from Yale University and the UCLA Anderson Graduate School of Management. And with that, welcome, Sonia. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be with you, Paul and Lisa. Thanks for having me. Well, we are so excited that you're here today, too. And as you know, Paul and I are big why believers. So we always start our question, our first question with our guests of why. Why do you do what you do? I love that about you too. You always have me looking at that essential, that foundational principle of the why. And so I'm happy to share it. I'm so clear on it now after working with you two and talking to you for a while. I'm very clear. My personal why is really to facilitate uh, financial self-determination for as many people as possible throughout the San Fernando Valley region. And um, our organizational why is definitely um, doing that, that very same thing, strengthening the local economy and improving the quality of life in our region. So that would be our why. Wow. I love what you say, financial self-determination, your personal. So important, isn't it? And it can be a little bit out of reach or a little bit... Um, uh, difficult for people to grab hold of unless they grew up with parents or in a household that understood how to convey those principles. And oftentimes we have folks who, who just didn't grow up understanding that. And so it's really important to be able to share that with people so they can enter into that and make a better legacy for their families. Hmm. Yeah. Sonia, talk a little bit about uh, 
the purpose of the economic alliance and what it does for the community that's something that would be important for our audience to understand your I mean, we we work with nonprofit leaders. You're certainly one of the nonprofit leaders in the Valley. So having an understanding of how your alliance fits into the overall broader structure of the Valley would be important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, the Valley Economic Alliance, um, our purpose is really to engage the stakeholders in the region, whether they be businesses or residents and really pull together to uh, improve the economy in the region and to uh, just make a better quality of life. And that touches on so many different issues, you know, um, but essentially it comes down to a couple of things. It comes down to um, helping support our local businesses to make sure that we retain as many jobs as possible and prevent the displacement of jobs and businesses from the five city San Fernando Valley region. So that region is Burbank, Calabasas, Glendale, uh, the San Fernando Valley region of the city of Los Angeles and the city of San Fernando. So uh, to retain jobs and businesses in that five city region, and to create new jobs by attracting new businesses into the area, into vacant commercial spaces that may be available. So that's really what the Alliance does. That's our sweet spot, retaining jobs and businesses and creating jobs by attracting new businesses and then letting as many people know as possible about the virtues of the San Fernando Valley. And Excellent. you have an educational program too, don't you, that you can share? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, one of the keys to retaining businesses is making sure they have the information needed to increase revenues and to decrease their costs. So we do have an educational series and we help companies to really understand how they can uh, tap into um, tax credits and energy rebates, um, renegotiating their uh, their financial commitments to help them save on costs. And then on the revenue generating side, this year in particular, we're really getting into helping people understand how to move into key e-commerce, e how to um, expand their business through um, digital marketing, uh, how to grow their revenue base by doing business with government and uh, government agencies and major corporations, as well as exporting to global economies so that they can tap into these new revenue streams. Wow, exciting stuff, yeah. exciting stuff. Yeah, it's really exciting. And it's a great opportunity to network too. When you get on these, we do everything virtually these days. And so we've got these webinar programs and uh, people get on there and they not only get the great information, but they can meet the speakers. And of course, in the chat, they can share their contact information and network with other business owners in the Valley area, which is very valuable. In addition to the educational programming we do uh, via webinars, we also do one-on-one. -on -one. We sit down with businesses and um, do an intake and really assess where they are. And maybe there are aspects of their businesses that they didn't even realize they could get help and resources. So we make them aware of uh, different government programs and resources and, and who's doing what and kind of connect the dots for our local businesses so that they're not going it alone, but they're really placed within an alliance, a network to help them to increase revenues and reduce costs. It's very helpful. It is very helpful. You know, I, I came upon the Valley Economic Alliance about five years ago and the work I was doing in the city of Glendale. and realized that that was such an integral part of the San Fernando Valley, but as you said, Glendale, Burbank, because those were two cities I was working in as well. And it was in, in many ways regarded as, and still is, one-stop shopping of where you could go um, to really get a lot of support and resources. Mm -hmm. What you were talking about was a good segue into what I was gonna ask is with COVID, um, have you pivoted, have you impacted, and has there been what we say in this time for for nonprofit we say a unique service proposition that's been developed in the for-profit is a unique sales proposition but it's a USP 
and looking at has there been um, a USP that the Valley Economic Alliance has been able to establish in this last year as a result of our forced evolution mm. navigating through this pandemic? Right. Oh my goodness. Um, the economy has shifted. The, the landscape has really changed and the alliance has changed along with it. And so, of course, um, like many of the businesses that we serve, we've experienced things like um, we're working remotely now. So just managing the staff and trying to keep the team together and on the same page, despite being in these different locales. Uh, so that's one way that we've learned to pivot and um, uh, um, also serving, uh, you know, moving our programs into the virtual environment uh, took some doing. Our um, our client-facing programs as well as our fundraising programs, we did a, our annual gala virtually this year, which was quite a pivot for us. Um, so there are those kinds of things. One thing that's really interesting is uh, the need for our programs became a lot more evident, I think, to the funding community and to others as well. The work that we do is so important, and especially now. So the case is there and the case is made. And um, that's a really important shift. Um, one of the challenges, I think, in the COVID environment for us has been just uh, the pressure, the financial pressure that's been put on our business clients, that's been put on um, the funders that we work with. Uh, and so, um, you know, everybody's operating under a greater degree of stress, of course, and also considering the health concerns. So that's been interesting and, and challenging for interpersonal relationships and really have to take the time. You know, you don't just hang out at networking events any longer and just, um, you know, connect and, um, and, and make small talk. Now you get on a call and you have an agenda. And, um, and so it can be, uh, you know, it, it's just a, a different kind of environment. We're missing the networking and the personal touch. Um, on the upside, though, we're operating more efficiently than ever using technology to deliver services and programs and becoming more and more knowledgeable about those and able to pass that information along to local businesses. And, uh, and so there have been, you know, some interesting um, benefits that have come out of it. There's a camaraderie, you know, we're really all in this together and we're here to help one another and to weather this storm and to thrive. Um, and seeing people in their personal environments, right? You meet their kids, you see their dogs. It's been uh, warmer in a way, you know, where we've been getting to know people in their home environments through um, video conference. So anyway, but for our unique service proposition, um, gosh, I would have to say that because we're an alliance of the most influential leaders in the Valley, whether they be government or corporate or nonprofit, we really have um, a unique knowledge base and uh, a network that can help businesses to solve their problems and uh, capitalize on opportunities. So that's been a, a really uh, fantastic, um, unique position that we have as an alliance with our board of 80 of uh, the most impactful, influential leaders and um, all working together for the benefit of Valley operating businesses. Wow. And I'll just say, I know Paul's got a question in there. I, I just want to tell the listeners that I attended, and thank you very much. I attended your virtual gala and so well done. There's a lot that we could learn from how the Valley Economic Alliance did their virtual gala, but you certainly checked off that box that when nonprofits said, well, we can't be doing anything during COVID um, because we can't gather in person, so we can't have a ga gala. You show them that we can. <laughs> we can, we can. And in fact, we raised um, just about as much as our in-person galas have raised for the past 23 some odd years. And we netted more than we had in past years because our expenses were less. So it's really interesting how when we are given adversity, we can turn it around to be a strength somehow. And I think business owners really know that and the ones that really thrive are the ones who are so resilient and um, they, they figure that kind of thing out. So I feel like we can really empathize and we really understand the businesses that we serve because we're a local nonprofit and we've got to be really scrappy and really smart about what we're doing just like they do. Yeah, there's so many, there's so many lessons, uh, you know, that you conveyed with you moving through this pandemic and how you've had to adapt and then overcome some of the challenges you've had. We, 
and we we often talk like that is that you have to adapt improvise and overcome it's a military term but it it really does make sense for the business community to look for uh, examples such as your own on how you've had to do that just as interesting you know so the pandemic we're almost a year into this now talk a little bit about what you see carrying over into the new normal that you've gained from the pandemic part of it was is that you said you could do things virtually now and uh you're much more on task or you're much more focused in a virtual meeting so talk a little bit about what you see carrying on after we get through the brunt of the pandemic and we'll be in a new normal we we know that new muscles have been developed but uh, explain that from the alliance's standpoint yeah well the efficiencies that we've been able to achieve with our board meetings for example and committee meetings to which the public is invited is invited and and our events uh, boy using video conferencing has been uh, just a real powerful tool so well, we don't want to let go of that you know because we cover such a vast region um, it's been helpful to get um, increased participation from folks from Calabasas to Glendale when the meeting is virtual and they don't have to contend with parking um, and traveling and traffic and and such so um, that's great we've also been able to increase you know we can have subcommittee meetings in between meetings and and uh, have small task forces really tackle problems uh, because they can just hop on a call and then hop back off so that is something that we've now embedded in our culture um, it helps to advance our productivity and our excellence and, um, and, and connectivity and collaboration. So we're gonna continue to use those kinds of tech tools to bring people together, uh, to convene um, thought leaders, uh, and to, to really advance the work. So that's gonna be something that, and, and we will do some in person when it becomes safe to do that as well. There's, there's nothing that replaces that for sure. So um, in terms of our business assistance and our meetings and uh, different programs and events, uh, we're going to go to a hybrid model, likely, and we'll be able to have um, offerings for folks that might meet, you know, any of those needs. Yeah, I, th I think that's so smart. And what we're looking at now, and, and now that we've been so long into this and realizing what this does overall for our, our environment, too, and, and having us, obviously, there's their hybrid solution, right, in which we can get the best of both worlds, that we can maximize what we can do with our in-work but also we realize remotely how that that lends to efficiency. It yeah. also lends, um, you know, to our environment and, and having it be better for the environment. You know, when you were talking, it, I kind of I also thought of a question that's really unique to you. I relate to it a little bit, uh, but you have a cross sector background. And that is, you know, because of the work that you've done in the local government and city uh, public sector, you have that public sector background. You're working with a nonprofit. I like to call them a four impact um, uh, or a third sector, right? Uh, and then your your service, those who you serve are business owners. And so the for profit, I think uh, we're really interested and I think our listeners would be too in what do you see as being consistent across all sectors um, that you really like your background brought to this position what it is that you see as a common theme and best practice that could be universal cross sector is there anything that comes to mind in regard to that and how your background and it being cross sector has added a lot of value to the valley economic alliance Mm, yeah, yeah, I'd say it's mission. And it comes down to, I mean, what you you two teach that, you know, mission is really foundational. And it really is. I think that's the common denominator to all the sectors is it's um, public benefit. It's serving the people. And so whether you're serving them by providing a needed product or service, or you're um, you know, offering a kind of more of a social service or public amenities, um, or you're um, coming alongside and supporting a, a target audience that 
is in need of really connecting the dots um, to access um, different kinds of services um, like the nonprofit sector does, then it really is about um, making the world a better place. I mean, it's about impact. Um, and uh, as, as much public benefit as possible. And there really is crossover. I mean, I really love corporate social responsibility and you've got the corporations and they could be looking at how they can be pursuing uh, while they're seeking to make a profit, how they can leave their communities uh, better than when they you know, got there, when they started operating there and how they can uplift their employees and really be about equity and diversity and environmental sustainability as well. And so that's a wonderful nexus from the, the primarily the private sector lens. And then you've got the social enterprises or the nonprofits that are maybe uh, getting into different kinds of earned income uh, or, or charging a fee for service so that they can be have a sustainable model and not always be beholden to funders, but um, to uh, deliver services and then also to look at ways to uh, to recoup some of the cost of what they do through fees. So there, there's those, there are those hybrids there. And then there's the public sector, uh, which is really there to make sure that, that, you know, that everyone has a fair shot, that the playing field is leveled as much as possible, and that, um, and that where there are inequities, that we can balance the system out with regulation and legislation. And some would argue that um, sometimes the public sector goes too far or doesn't go far enough, um, but the intent is there. And everywhere I've worked, I've seen a real sincerity and a real commitment to making our community work, to making our community a community that really works uh, and works for everyone. So um, I love that I get to be leading an organization that's very much about that in the Valley. Well said, Sonia. Yeah, that's terrific. Um, you know, we met you and had the opportunity indeed to engage with you on a number of occasions and it dealt with planning. And we, we have often found with nonprofits that there's a weakness in this area that they aren't looking out far enough or planning deeply enough or specific enough when it comes to goals and goal setting. Mm -hmm. Just talk a little, little bit about your experience with us working with you on goal setting and the importance it has been to uh, your your over, overall alliance plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting with leaders. An organization can really only go as far as their leader's greatest weakness, and that can hold the whole thing back. And uh, and so um, you know, just. Um, having conversations with you where you could just give me that perspective on, uh, you know, where are my strengths and then where do I really need to work on improving so that the whole institution, the whole organism um, can advance and can um, advance exponentially. And so for my part, I have for the longest time, for as long as I can remember anyway, I've been a, a real idea person. Oh my gosh, if a day goes by without me getting a new uh, idea, maybe hair brain scheme, some would say it's, uh, it's an incredible day. Um, get new ideas, always coming, always coming, always coming. And then, uh, you know, another step in the process is action. So I'm not like folks who sit on the sideline and don't take action. I take a lot of action. And so I keep very busy. And so the question is, is it strategic action? Well, there's a gap in between idea and action, and that's the gap where smart planning needs to come into play. And so uh, with your strategic way of thinking, you really help shed some light on not only the need for that, that missing link, um, but also how to go about doing that, making really measurable goals and planning out, um, assessing an idea and really gauging how much that idea might cost, not only in terms of uh, cash outlay or financial outlay, but in terms of energy and time and other types of resources and the network. Because every action does have some sort of cost, whether it's tangible or intangible, and it really does keep an organization from doing something else. So you really have to be careful before taking action to determine if an idea is not just a good idea, but it's a great idea 
or it's the right idea for the right time. So I will forever be grateful for the perspective that you've helped me to gain in honing my skill in that area and my planning skills. That's been, that was one of the wonderful things. Thank you for sharing because we haven't yes. heard it. I think that particular way between the bridge planning is the bridge between the idea and the action and mm -hmm. uh, and hearing that back from you in regards to the value of it. And and Paul's right, that's my experience in, in working for or with nonprofits for the last 20 years in executive management. It does seem to be a lot of focus on fundraising, always. A lot of focus on we need to raise funds, ASAP. Uh, very little attention paid to planning. And it has a lot to do with that we're just not, um, we haven't practiced that skill set. We haven't developed that a lot. We haven't spent a lot of time doing that. And it is something that our, our our corporate sector for sure has spent a lot of times doing a lot of time doing when they started you know in the 90s implementing strategic planning initiatives and so on. But there's a a wealth of of um, benefit there to the mm -hmm. nonprofit. And and I think I know we're 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 coming up to our end time in a few minutes. But um, you know Paul said something that it inspired me to think about to vision because you said in um, you know, one of the answers a few minutes ago talking about cross-sectorally, the commonality is mission-driven, which is definitely a concept that, that cross-sectors have used for a number of years. In the last decade, there's been an emphasis on vision. And that in part was inspired by Simon Sinek, who, Sonia, you know, we're, we're big fans of Simon Sinek and start with why and find your why and implement your why, and live your why. <laughs> um, but it's because it makes a lot of sense and because we've also seen businesses and organizations thrive, which we define as perpetually uh, maximizing your potential. There's so much clarity that comes from vision and knowing where you're headed. And so I think it would benefit our listeners too in exciting them just to hear about what are some of the thoughts that you have for the future regarding the Valley Economic Alliance and where you're going and where you're headed or uh, what you want to be and grow into? We'd love Absolutely. to hear from you. Oh, thanks for asking that because in times like these that are challenging, it's so inspiring to think of the future. And so at the Alliance, one of the things that's really important for us is not only help companies to remain resilient through uh, the current realities, but to plant the seeds now for the recovery that is to come. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're thinking ahead, we're trying to get ahead of where are the opportunities going to lie and how can we help companies to pivot and to be prepared to capitalize on some of those opportunities, whether it be uh, global, exporting globally or uh, procurement and contracting opportunities coming down the road with the Olympics coming in the World Cup and the Super Bowl and all these great opportunities. Uh, so, so really being very future oriented and looking at the landscape and, and identifying opportunities for our business clients and for us as an alliance um, to, uh, to always be looking at how we can improve and um, improve and, and excel still more. Um, we'd really like to uh, look at how we can be uh, a facilitator of new businesses coming into uh, the vacant office spaces, vacant retail, um, the change of use of retail to housing, uh, looking at our real estate footprint uh, throughout the region and seeing how we can um, uh, better deploy those resources and come along the private sector and the public sector and thinking about how we can revitalize our inner city areas um, and strengthen our, our burgeoning, growing metropolis areas as well. So it's a, it's a very exciting time. I, I understand that the character, the Chinese character for danger is the same character that connotes um, opportunity and it really <laughs> depends on the context. And I think that's what's before us as a Valley region and before us as the Alliance taking what may be um, uncertainty and turn it into opportunity that works for everyone. So um, I'm very excited about the future and eager to work with everyone. And I hope that people will definitely keep in touch with us and be a part of the Alliance. Yeah, well, thank you. I, I love ending on that note because the more people we talk to like you, the more that we know that the boom is coming. 
Um, it, it's going to happen. And now's the time to prepare and plan for that so that you can maximize your potential when the boom happens, you and your business. Uh, so Absolutely. that's a wonderful ending thought. And we'll ask you to uh, contact information that you can share with our listeners. Where can they go to find out more information about the Valley Economic Alliance or contact you? Absolutely. So uh, listeners can do both, can uh, learn more about the Alliance and contact me through our website at thevalley.net. And I encourage you to sign up for our email updates so that you can get the latest information on uh, what we're working on and what others are working on to help advance the economy and provide small business resources uh, for the San Fernando Valley region. So thevalley.net. And uh, we, uh, we have members of our board of directors, but we don't have paying members of our organization. There are no dues. Um, uh, we have sponsors and we are so grateful to our investors and our board members who fund our organization. And uh, business owners and residents can partake of our committee meetings and um, get involved with our programs at no cost uh, to them. So um, that's a great resource that we encourage people to take advantage of at thevalley.net. Excellent. Thank Perfect. you so much. <laughs> Yeah, my what, pleasure. I mean, what, a great con what a great conversation with you, Sonia. I mean, just a lot of lessons learned and and especially for our nonprofit leaders, you know, there's just a lot of value in what you were able to convey today. Thanks so much for that. Wow, I'm so glad. Thanks for the opportunity and for just being great colleagues and friends in this journey. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, that's great. All right, Paul, I know you want to share just uh, before we sign off in a minute or so, share some final thoughts. Yeah, I do. Uh, and Lisa brought this up. Look, you you should, from a business owner standpoint, you should be positioning yourself now to take advantage of what we, we see to be explosive economic activity in the second half of this year. There is so much pent up demand that it's gonna be taken advantage of come July and uh, going forward from there. So one of the ways you can do that is, is become a chamber member if you aren't. And the chamber sponsors the Small Business Roundtable. That's the second Friday of every month from 7.30 to nine. I co-host that with Paul Butler, who's the co-owner of New Leaf Training Development. And the round table is an opportunity for chamber business owners to get together, listen to a subject matter expert for 10 or 15 minutes, tee up a topic that's relevant to your business, and it will toss out some challenges that you may be having. Then you have the opportunity to discuss it with peers and really get down to some solutions that you can take action on today. If you aren't a chamber member, you can't take advantage of this. So I encourage you, if you aren't, join the chamber. The chamber has a lot of great programs that they've rolled out recently. One is a 401k. Another one is uh, in health insurance for employees. So there's a lot that the chamber is doing for you, and it's a great organization to be a member of. Mm -hmm. So take advantage of the Small Business Roundtable. We'll see you 730 on the second Friday of every month. And I assure you, you'll have great value coming out of that session. Yes. And Sonia, we want to thank you so much for your time and imparting great wisdom to our listeners. And we're excited to see you and the Valley Economic Alliance grow. And we encourage listeners to visit our website at onetruenorthcoach.com. We have a COVID-19 resource page that we created uh, about a month into the pandemic with a lot of resources, helpful slides, things that we aim to assist you as you navigate through this. And there's also testimonials there. You can find out more about who we are, what we do and how we serve. And also on our homepage is a little bit more information regarding what Paul started off this conversation with is the business health checkup opportunity. Mm -hmm. We really encourage you to take advantage of this. There are no strings attached. This is an opportunity for you to have a conversation with us, for us to send you and to have a dialogue about some really great questions that will inspire you to think about your business as is and your business as what it could be. So take us up on our offer, contact us and have a conversation with us. And uh, also visit our One True North Facebook and LinkedIn pages. That's where we post weekly articles and sign up for being on our newsletter as well. 
Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you all next week. And until then, be safe.